Hey now everybody, uh, it's Depresso here bringing you another useless video that you probably shouldn't be watching. You should probably be reading a book right now. Today I'm going to be talking about a, uh, you know, one of my favorite musicians of all time. Uh, not very well known, some of you might not know him, although I don't know why you'd be watching this if you didn't. Uh, but Mark Kozilek has finally returned. It is the return of Mark, uh, of, of Mark Kozilek, folks. And... Uh, as, as you guys know, Mark was brutally canceled. Um, what, what year was that? That was, that was like 2020, I think. Um, in the midst of the pandemic, 2021, it seems that he was uh, canceled for a handful of uh, accusations of sexual misconduct. Can't say I was surprised. I, I went to a couple shows of his and I saw the, the, the vibe and the way he, uh, I mean, he hit on my girlfriend at the time, which, you know, I was like, dude, I've been a fan of yours for eight fucking years. She doesn't even know you. I'm dragging her to this show. How about showing me some attention? How about complimenting my smile, cocksucker? No, but it's all good. Um, and, uh, yeah, so Mark's coming back. There's a, there's a, there's a large group of people that will never accept him back. Um, the, the same thing with Louis CK and all these guys. Uh, that's just the way it is, and uh, honestly, I can't really, you know, it is what it is. I, I don't, I don't get it. I'm not, you know, but again, I don't fucking know. I'm not, I'm not going to judge people too harshly for feeling the way they feel. But uh, I am excited that he's coming back, and my prediction was when he got destroyed, and he finally stopped putting out albums every year. You know, he's he's like Madden the video game or Call of Duty. He was putting out albums every year for a long time. Multiple albums, I think. And the quality was hit or miss. I actually liked a lot of his stuff more than other people seem to have felt about it. A lot of people, you know, I'm going to get into this too. A lot of fans of, of anybody are fucking pricks. The same thing. Uh, Bob Dylan in his book said at one point he wanted to set his fans on fire. That's how much he hated his fans. Because, number one, they worship people, which is ridiculous. Everyone's a human. Everyone's a, just a guy or a girl or a they, them, or whatever. I, I'm, the point is, no one's a god. No, one, no one's above anyone else. So the whole worship thing is ridiculous and it's isolating. And the other thing is, these people's fans, they're assholes. They don't respect the artist. They want, oh, I, with Bob Dylan, oh, you're a folk singer. I want you to do folk music. I don't want you to do country music. I don't want you to do rock and roll music. I don't want you to uh, play the standards. Whatever. The guy, you know, his whole career, he's innovated and done what he, you know, gone on to do things that he wanted to do. And people shit on him for it. And they demanded him as if he's like a fucking jukebox. Oh, play the stuff. I, make the stuff I want you to make. Same thing with Mark. People criticize him. They want him to go back to, you know, singing Duck Who Kim and, uh, you know, those classic songs. And there's even the Red House Painter people who, Jesus Christ, move on. And so that's always the case. So he's always gotten shit from his quote-unquote fans. Uh, and uh, so the point I'm trying to make is that, yeah, he was putting out albums, and it seems like he was, number one, not really putting in the amount of effort that he should have been. I mean, that being said, I really did... And I do love some of the uh, experimental stuff he put out. Some of that spoken word stuff. Um, the album, the two albums he did with uh, Jim, fuck, I'm gonna fuck him, Jim White, some uh, were amazing. I mean, again, hit or miss. I thought Lunch in the Park overall was great. There was some. I mean, that song Spain is just one of my favorites of his. Spain, Spain. Oh, I dreamed last night of Spain. After going through old journals, entries written from planes and trains. And uh, there's also horrible, like November 2020, that song is, is really an abomination. With my bandmates watching the election tick, Justin kept walking outside. Smoking his rolly cigarette. So anyway, my point is he was putting out stuff that obviously, you know, was was kind of scattered and it seemed like he wasn't really, you know, focused or grounded. And my prediction for uh, when he got canceled was this is going to be, number one, he's going to have to take a break from music. He's going to have to stop. Stop the fucking bleeding. 
And number two, he's going to have a giant chip on his shoulder now. He's going to be like, you know what? Fuck these motherfuckers. Fuck Pitchfork, the fucking review site. Fuck these, mother like, Brooklyn, you know, whatever. I'm going to come out with great art, and I'm going to fucking have to be relevant again. I'm going to have to, you know, it's going to be so good that they're going to have to talk about it. They're going to have to respect it. That might be, uh, that's something I thought could be in play. And then the other thing, too, is he got humbled. He got humbled because he got destroyed. He got ridiculed. His relationship probably blew up. I don't know what's new. Obviously, he's. we're going to get into that. The two singles he's released, talking about that, talking about the fallout of everything that happened. But uh, there's there's a lot of factors that I saw, you know, this is good. I mean, I, I you know, it's not good that he, he, that there was some problems, you know, with these women. Uh, but artistically, I thought I saw this as a good opportunity to reset and refocus. And so what we've seen from him, these two singles, Black Perch is a recent one. And then the other one, uh, the doorbells are ringing, man. I am excited, guys. I don't know if you've heard these. If you haven't, please check them out. Uh, I'm going to be talking about them right now. But everything I've said, uh, I, th I think is coming true. I think he's coming back more grounded. I think he's more he's more humble. He's more introspective. He's taking it a lot more serious. Uh, he's actually singing. Um, and the songs are amazing. Um, I really like, uh, you know, I like Black Perch. It's growing on me. But Doorbells Are Ringing is incredible. That, that song is really, I really, it really clicked for me after, after a while. Um, and we're going to get into that. So let's talk. Um, first, first single that he released, Doorbells Are Ringing, talking about his relationship and the stuff that's gone on there. Pull up the lyrics here. He was talking about a bird. The last little fledgling flew away. You know, that's always fun. So he's talking about COVID, he's talking about the bird. And then, you know, I really, I am a New Yorker, um, but I do like San Francisco and I love him talking about San Francisco. You can tell he just loves the city. I feel the same way about New York. And uh, he talks about traveling around uh, the San Francisco area, going on road trips, um, talking about Redwood City, Frenchman's Creek, Pescatero, which I wanna, after hearing all this stuff about that place, I wanna go. So he's saying, things feel so new again, rediscovering my love for you. Two years off has given me a brand new view. Exactly what I just said. Uh, you know, miracles happen, my home in the woods. So he's be, he's grateful. He's coming out with, uh, you know, he's trying to be grateful. He's trying to take it easy. Now this part of the of uh, doorbells are ringing and I'm gonna play uh, some of the song. So I'm gonna cut this up and, and play some of the song, but he goes into, um, your dark brown eyes are like jewelry, your wisdom a deep treasure. Long black hair. This is as beautiful as ever And your dark brown eyes are like jewelry Your wisdom, a deep treasure That is just his uh, description of his girlfriend Caroline, I believe Is, uh, is very nice, I, I like that a lot um, And my favorite part of this song is him kind of coming to this conclusion The tide pools, the seal rocks, and the fishing gear Guys fishing for salmon and strippers. I want to live the rest of my life with you here. That final line, I want to live the rest of my life with you here, that really hits hard for me. That's a beautiful line, a beautiful part of the song, musically, lyrically. Wow, I, I just really love this song um, because I think it's genuine. I think, I mean, it's not only, it sounds great, but it's it's just you know you know all of our you know Mark fans are not necessarily like other fans. All his music is about his life. It's about him. It's about you know growing up in Ohio. Uh, fans of Mark know a lot about the guy, and so hearing this song, hearing uh, the shift in tone and his change and, and kind of like being grateful and talking about his you know this area and all this is a really, you know, it just comes across as very genuine and grounded. And I'm excited. And then the, let's talk about the other song, Black Perch, which is the newest single, is also all those things I just mentioned. A little bit more upbeat and retrospective. So he talks about, I really like two parts of it. I like when he talks about Ray Leonard. Ray Leonard was asked, what is a champion? He 
said believing in yourself when nobody else does. And I really love this thing about the Raymond Carver book. And talking about his uh, ex-girlfriend, I presume Katie, who died of cancer. God, I know this guy's whole fucking biography. I know more about this guy than my own father. Sitting on the beach, lying in the water. For the first time ever, I'm reading Raymond Carver. My ex-girlfriend liked him so much that I was jealous and I never opened door touched. One of his books, I never read a story. I was young and threatened, stubborn and petty. Then she died and now the time has passed. I finally lightened up and I buried the axe. Reading what we talk about when we talk about love. Stories would have stumped me when I was young. His books would have left me scratching my head. With age and life experience, they made so much sense. And now I know a little more about her than what I thought I did. I loved reading about the sorrows of life and the struggles of relationships. But this song is beautiful. This song is beautiful. And I love, again, I just love this new tone of he's humbled. At least musical. I don't know the guy's personal life, but I'm just going off these songs. I'm going off the art. Talking about, you know, he, didn't, he wouldn't have understood this stuff as a young guy. Now he does. He wishes he could kind of go back and talk to this uh, person who passed away about this. He talks about what's a champion, believing in yourself when nobody else does. That's kind of hinting maybe towards this period where he got, you know, punished. And maybe rightfully so. I don't, I, you know, who's to say? I, th I think everybody deserves a second chance if they prove that they can change their behavior. Um, nothing he did was illegal, so that's different. You know, if that is a Weinstein is not the same as this type of stuff, obviously. I mean, it should be obvious, but apparently it's not for some people. But uh, yeah, I, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited that he's back. I also wanted to say that there was a, a couple videos co uh, came out recently of him playing in, I believe, Columbus or maybe it was Canton, Ohio. And uh, there was a couple people posting on the uh, Facebook page talking about how, you know, he was taking requests. He was giving fans vinyl. He was... You know, he played Daku Kim. Looking out on my roof last night. Woken up from a dream. So, you know, you could be cynical and say he's he's like, oh, I gotta get my career back, I gotta be nice, I gotta come across as a good guy. Or you could, you know, take the approach that, you know. This is a reset for him. It's it's a humbling experience. He had to take it down a notch. He had to realize what's going on. Be grateful for his fans. Be grateful for this career that he's had. I'm excited, man. I, I really am. I really am curious what this next record is going to be. This could be a Benji coming coming down the pipe. Uh, we're going to see what happens, but uh, let's keep tabs on it. Let's, let's, uh, let's you know, this is fun. Let's go. Anyway, that's it for me. Um, I'm going to be making more random videos here and there whenever I feel like it. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think of the two uh, singles that have come out. What you think about this new album. What you think about Mark's new demeanor, this new phase of his career. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace and love. And uh, take it easy. Bye.